Hi everyone, I'm Jody Barrows. Welcome to our live webinar today on February the 15th. We're going to do a little bit of education on the square and a square system and make sure that you type in your questions anytime you have any questions or comments and we'll see if we can answer those here during this live webinar. I want to remind you, for those of you that are new to the Square in a Square, is that we have a quilting text line. The number is 817-713-2879. And with that number, you can text a quilting question, you can um, send a picture or a video of what you're working on or what you need help with. We help people on the text line um, every day, almost every day of the week. So we're always anxious to hear from you and see what you're working on and get you the quilting help that you need. Now, those of you that are new to the square and a square system, we're going to do a little demo today on it. And what it does is it helps remove the human element so that you can get more speed and more accuracy when you make all of your quilts. We know that the triangle unit is the beauty of the quilt and what gives it the motion and the movement, but that's also the hassle and the headache and the hard work. So the square and a square system helps relieve that triangle stress and it helps you become the piecer that you've always dreamed of. So we're going to show you some of that here in just a minute. And the other cool thing is, is that you just need one tool, one uh, square and a square ruler. We call it the original. We do have a mini and a grande, but you only need one. And uh, the other ones are there for convenience and they do a few other things. But one tool will help you make all of the, the quilts that you want to make and help you achieve those perfect points and that nice smooth flat work on any design or pattern that you're doing. Also with the Square and a Square system, we have what we call the reference book, and it has over 30 quilts and over 50 blocks, but this is the one that has the different units that we call options. The first 17 options, which are the first um, 17 triangle units that you can get. Now, everything we do starts out with a square in the middle and strips on the side, and you can make it any size that you want, and of course, any color uh, that you need. And the square in the middle is what we're going to be working on in our demo today. But we also have the triangle units, the options that go from 18 to 39. And those all start out with the diamond in the middle. So you can have your square in the middle, that's your 90 degree angle. You can have the diamond in the middle, that's your 60s and your 120s. And you can go back in on some of our other uh, YouTube videos and Facebook videos and see some more with um, the diamond. But we're not going to do any more today with that. So um, when you look at a quilt, now these up here just have plain squares in them and we use our four patch ruler and our nine patch ruler to help with those. But when you look at beautiful quilts like this one over here and you see all of these triangle units, you see flying geese, you see half square triangles, you see this big square and a square here in the middle, that can look a little intimidating and a little scary but this is actually one of the most easiest quilts that you can make when you learn the square and the square system because everything is just that square with the strips. You sew that up in just a very simple, speedy fashion on the machine, and then you let the ruler or the tool do the work for you. So let's go in and let's look at how we use the ruler and kind of what we're going to do. So you can start out with your square in the middle, strips on the side. You can do any size that you're looking for because I have limited space, we're gonna work with the smaller one. And you're going to use the uh, tool and the 90 degrees corner or angle that's on there. I'll, I'll put it on there here in just a minute. And you'll trim it up. And I want you to see how you get what we call our option one. So it's that perfect fourth of an inch on all four sides. So that's what we're gonna get out of our, our basic square. You can trim it up and get your option one. And that's what we used here in this quilt. You can see how those are just option ones that you would just pop down in there. You've got uh, four of those in the block, a split rail, and a plain corner, corner square. You can also trim two corners sharp right up to the tip. So I would trim leaving the fourth of an inch on the top and bottom and go right up to the tip on the other two, cut it in half and get my flying geese. And then you can also, let me see if I have any half square triangles. Um, so this one would be option four, and you trim right up to the tip on all four, 
cut this way and this way and you can see your half square triangles. So let's get started trimming so you can see how this works. So the first one I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my 90 and let's see if we can get the camera to zoom down here just as close as we can. So here is my original ruler and this first set of lines right here is the 90. And I wanna push that tip or that corner of that 90 right into the tip or the corner of that fabric square. Just push it in there. Black lines on my ruler go right over the seams of my fabric. I have a heavy grid line that goes right through the point. On the opposite side, I trim it up, and I do that to all four sides, and I have um, what we call the option one, the square in a square. And like I showed uh, just a few minutes ago, you can see how it goes into this quilt, just like this, in all four of the corners. Now you can take your square, just like this was a square in the middle with strips on the side, so let's back up. This was a square in the middle with strips on the side. Now this is a square, and I can sew strips on each side of it, just like I did here. And trim it up the same way, pushing the 90 right in the corner, and that's my option two. That means to sew around your center square two times or more, because this was my center square. This was my first row of strips. I trimmed them up, and then I sewed around it again and trim leaving that fourth of an inch and that's my option too. Believe it or not, I don't have it to show today, but I just need an option one, an option two, and my very first, um, and my option seven that comes out of my diamond. And this is all I need to make my storm at sea. These are not the right colors and the right sizes, but you can see how in this row you would have the option seven laying down with an option one and those just repeat and then you have it standing up in the next row with your option two and those repeat and these three units that's all you need to make your storm at sea your storm at sea is here in your main reference book towards the back we've got multiple sizes for you and of course you would need the original ruler so the storm at sea does not have to be a difficult design or pattern and towards the end of the video, I'm going to show you a really special quilt where it uses the same concept as the Storm at Sea. You get all that motion and movement. So we will come back to that one um, here momentarily. Now, if I want to uh, make my uh, flying geese, my two, I get two flying geese, I'm gonna trim leaving the fourth of an inch on two. So I'm gonna go to the opposite side and leave that fourth of an inch push it right in the corner, black lines over the seam, grid line, keep it square. And you can see how that it helps remove the, the imperfection that you have. Um, you know, with a basic square, the humanness is the cutting of the square, the sewing of the strips, and then the trimming it. And so when you come in here to trim, you can really help clean up any um, imperfections that you, that you have. So now on this one, you just put your 90 in there. We call it the two-step. I'm stepping it over two lines. I'm making sure it's right, nice and sharp in the point. I want that sharp trim. I have to keep it square where I've already cut. I have a grid line that goes right through my corner. Repeat that on the other side. Do the two-step trim, keeping it square everywhere. So you can see how it has a fourth of an inch at the top and bottom, the sharp trim on the two sides, and then we're just going to cut it in half. Now, you have learned three things. You have learned about your basic square, square in the middle, strips on the side. You have learned how to trim leaving a fourth of an inch. You've learned how to trim doing the two-step, and you've learned that you can sew around your unit multiple times. Now, if you understand that, and see the ease and the simplicity in those three things, making your basic square, trimming it, leaving a fourth or two step, that's all there is to it. Everything else just builds off of those three things. So it may be a whole new concept and a way of looking at quilts and thinking about putting quilts together. And But if you can sew a basic square, I can do about 75 to 100 of these in an hour, I always tell my students, if you get 25 or more an hour, then you're doing fine. If 
you're getting less than 25 in an hour, you probably need to put that bag of Oreos farther away. <laughs> and uh, learning how to trim, leaving the fourth, and doing the two-step. That's all there is to it. So let's look at some quilts where we've used some of these shapes. Some of you may be brand new. Now, of course, if you're following any of our patterns, then the patterns are going to tell you exactly how much fabric you need, how many strips, how many squares, all of that. It's, you know, the, the patterns give you all that information. But if you are looking at um, building your own design, looking at something else, and you want to adapt it over to the square and a square system, then this book right here is what has your charts in it. So um, page 35 is where all of our charts start. And let's say that you need a flying goose because that's the most popular one and the one that always catches everybody's eye. And you say, okay, I need a sewn. You know, there's the sewn size, which is smaller. The cut size is larger. See how this has a raw edge? So that's a cut measurement if I was going to measure it. So you have to know up here at the top of your chart, it says what's the sewn size you're looking for. So if this had raw edges and it was two and a half by four and a half, then obviously it sews down to a two by four. And that's what I need to find on my chart. Find the two by four and then just move across horizontally and it tells me what size of center square and what size of strips. There's, I think, um, over 25 pages of charts and information in here so that you can start from nothing and build a quilt. How to adapt a pattern, how to figure your fabric amounts, all of that is here in the front part of the book. And then you get into your, your patterns and we'll give you multiple block sizes, not just the one block size. We always try to give you um, as much as we can uh, with sizing and help and then there's the over the the 30 30 different quilts in here so to me the the, the reference book is a is a must-have book now part of um, our webinar today and part of our webinar on Sunday was not only showing you quilts to get you inspired but to also let you know in uh, let you know about a quick little sale we're having we did the um, uh, webinar on Sunday and we said the sale was going to end on Wednesday night tonight. But since we're doing another promotion on it today, we're going to extend it to Sunday night. So you'll have the rest of the week to um, soak up and um, uh, take advantage of the different sales and different things that I'm going to tell you about. Now, this quilt right here is called uh, Village Square. And you can get, we have all of the quilts that, uh, or just about all the quilts we're going to show you, we have them all bundled up in kits where you can make the quilt just like we show it. But there's a catch on this one right here that I want to, to sh tell you about. This one right here is normally a little over $100, so I think you can get with a, all of our kits are 25% off with this sale to Sunday, so really take advantage of that um, offer on these kits for sale. But the one thing that's cool about this, and we've, we've already filled a lot of orders where people took advantage of this because we told them about it on Sunday. Is, is that in this quilt you have three fabrics. You have two yards of your background, two yards of a color, and then a three yard piece that is your, your setting and your sashing. So you can go, and of course your pattern comes with it. You can go into the website squareandasquare.com. In the search you can put sale items and all the sale items will pop up. Or you can go in there and click on kits. Anyway, this one is called Village Square, and what I want you to take advantage of is, is that in the comments section, you can go in there and build any of the fabrics you want in there. So it's a great way to get a two-yard piece, a two-yard piece, and a three-yard piece, and a pattern for that $81. Now, also in the comments section, if you want something different than the Village Square pattern, you can put most any of our patterns down in that location and get it. So a really a good opportunity to take advantage of getting a pattern, a two yard, a two yard, and a three yard, all uh, in that, uh, I think it's $81. Um, I hate to give numbers and prices just off my head like this because I may be wrong, but it's it's in the, in the computer. So this one is called Village Square. Take advantage building uh, the three different fabrics you want and getting those on sale. Any questions before I move on, Steve? Um, no. Okay. I want to back up just a minute in um, ease and simplicity of quilts because I want to show you these two quilts right here. These quilt kits are under $100, 
uh, regular price. So when you get your 25% off on these, these are really, really a good um, value. So even if you, like I said, don't want to make the simple little quilts we have, you'll have those fabrics at a discounted price to go in and just put them in your stash or make um, anything that you want out of those. Now this one is called Soldier's Comfort. It's really, really, really simple. It's one of the most simplest quilts that we have. You're just going to make this little patch here of squares. It's like a nine patch because you have one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Although they're different, you know, sizes, you have three different sizes in here. Normally the nine patch, they're all the same size, but this is just a nine patch setting. You've got your black star, your black check, and your blue uh, floral, which is our 1790 floral, which means that this was fabric that um, was produced, some of the first fabric in the United States in, in 1790, uh, when our fabric mills were just getting started and going up. So really a beautiful vintage piece. And there's not hardly any of this fabric left. You'll have to go into the website and look up the 1790 florals to see what's available. But in this kit, you will have a nice big piece of the blue in there. This is Soldier's Comfort. It's a great quilt to do. And anytime you have a focus print here that you're wanting to really highlight, you're kind of afraid to cut it up, you want to see the beauty of the whole design, this is a great quilt to do. Every time we get new fabrics in that has a focus, um, a really pretty part on it, florals or design, we like to put it um, in here. Now this one is called Road to Nowhere. And this one is a kit. We only have three of these. This is the same uh, 1790 floral. It's the one that we call dirt. There's not much left of any of it, but you can see the three split rails here. So the three rectangles, a four patch, and uh, then uh, just a solid square. So this one is really easy, fun to make, and it's great, uh, really just a fun, great quilt. We've had a lot of our customers and students make this into a larger bed size quilt and I've seen their photographs and it's just beautiful. The hardest part of this quilt is after you get it all put together, making sure that all of your uh, four patches, if you have a dominant one, that they all go in the same direction. That's, uh, I think, the, the hardest part about the quilt is just making sure that your color follows in that sequence that you want it to. Um, this one is Road to Nowhere, and the pattern for this one, there's two patterns that come together. It's the Road to Nowhere and the Country Barn. And we sold tons of the Country Barn. I'm not gonna show it today, um, but um, we actually sold the quilt and sold lots of kits from it from our Sunday videos. So if you wanna see Country Barn, go back to that um, video on Sunday and watch it. You'll learn different things and see different things in a different way. I've even noticed like when I go to like quilt shows and stuff, if I walk down an aisle this direction, I see stuff. If I turn around and walk down the aisle the other direction, different things catch my eye. I see different things. So it's good to go in and watch the videos, watch them over and over again. You're going to see things in a new way and in a new light. And sometimes I word something this way, another time I may word it a different way. And you know, all of you soak up and understand things differently. So you maybe didn't understand at that time, but you'll understand it better um, on, on another time. Okay, so let's, um, we've looked at two simple quilts. We've looked at the option one here. I wanna put out that, look at the option one right here and then um, we'll see if we have some questions. So this quilt right here is called Union Square. It's an individual pattern. It also comes with one I think called Broken Star. Really a great pattern to get. And this is our new uh, Transcontinental Railroad fabric and we do have some different bundles for it on sale. This kit um, is 25% off, so make sure you take advantage of it. It has our train elements, the black star, the red, the black check, and then I love how we have the uh, stripes of the train and those are really good for the for the borders and then we've also used a lot of the train track the stripe for the backing and this one is called union square and you can get this particular uh, kit for 25 percent off and i want you to see this option one right here in the middle we have this big option one so the option ones you can use um, to help create a design use them all by themselves option one is a great option to learn okay question well, I think it's something you're going to get too, but I'll let you uh, see a couple. I'll put them on the screen. 
Okay. Linda says, I've used this system and admit I love it. Confess, I haven't perfected it yet, but it just takes practice. Yes, Linda, the more you do of anything, the uh, better you will get and the more that you will understand. And I think that, you know, because we can make every quilt with our system, then sometimes people can get overwhelmed with learning it because they think they have to learn all of it. You don't. You just go in and start, you know, start with a quilt with the option one and just keep watching the videos and it all just starts to, to sink in more and better. And here's a continuation on this about the two-step. Okay, two-step. Okay. Uh, Gail says to Linda, it's kind of a... I'm, I'm, like, I'm with you, Linda. Okay. Linda, I've made a beautiful zebra baby quilt from this book. I was confused at first about the strip sizes. I definitely haven't figured out the two-step cut. Practice, practice, practice. Well, let's look at that two-step cut again because um, it's it's not difficult to do. So let's look. Um, let's just look at that. Okay, let's zoom our camera down here. Okay, so this is our, our square, this is our fabric, and you can see how it has those four corners. I'm and gonna move over to the other one. Okay, okay. and when you um, put the ruler on here to trim it up, you want it to be nice and sharp. So when you look at those corners, can you zoom down closer? So when you zoom down really close and look, you can see that this is just really, really sharp. You don't have white fabric blunted and you don't have blue fabric hanging off of the corner. So you do have blue fabric a fourth of an inch hanging off there. You want it nice and sharp. So when you look at your ruler here, can we zoom down any closer on it? Okay, good. So when you're doing the fourth of an inch trim, you push that 90 right in the corner and it leaves that fourth of an inch. So. When I push that in there, see how that leaves that fourth of an inch right there. That's what we want. Now, when we do the two-step, I always talk about putting your 90 in the corner because you'll, that's you know how you know to begin. So push your 90 into the corner. And then we say slide it into the square or step it over two lines. So when that 90 is in that square, and this is on the edge of that seam, and you step it over two, one, two, that's the line, and right there where it falls off the end of the ruler, that's where you wanna put that nice and sharp right in that point. So, because my fabrics are dark and you can't see them as well, we're gonna draw it. So that's my square in the middle. Here are my strips on the side. So when I put my 90, when I put my 90 in that corner, you can see how that my black lines are right over my blue strip, which is my edges of my fabric. So it's like it's right in that tip and they're right over that seam. And then I'm gonna step it over to, and see that leaves a fourth of an inch. So if I slide it one, just drag it down, two, and then make sure it's nice and sharp right in that corner. And then when I go back to that corner, there's a grid line right here that shoots through that other corner. So I push my, put my 90 in there, I step it over two, I go back to the point and I look for this grid line to shoot right through that corner and make my cut and see it's nice and sharp. So let me know, Linda and Gail, anyone else, um, if that makes a little bit more sense and helps. Now the reason why we do the two-step is because we have to move uh, the seam allowances and create one where we didn't have one. So when you look at the ruler and you just go to the corner of it, there's a fourth of an inch line and a fourth of an inch line. Now, when you put that right into the corner, you can see how when I sew a fourth of an inch here and a fourth of an inch here, there's my point right there exactly where I need it to be. And of course, that will be the same on that one when I sew it into my block, and then I have my fourth of an inch here. 
Okay, any questions? Uh, no. Okay. Now this one here is called a uh, disappearing star and we've used the six inch star. Um, I'm sorry, this is called double star, not disappoint, not, not disappearing. This is double star because you're going to have your black star that you see here and then you have this red bigger star that goes around it. So flying geese, of course, make your stars. And so I'm just going to do two of these basic squares and I'm going to get all four of these. Uh, flying geese. Of course, I need little squares in the corner and I need a square in the middle, but that is your star. And I love a star. It's my most favorite uh, some type of star. Those are always my most favorite blocks. So in this one, you can see the six inch star. You can see the option one, another star. We've used the railroad track for the, for the um, border. We've used it on the back. Now the cool thing about this kit is that it comes with the backing because you're going to get your backing and you're going to cut your borders off of it first so that you have plenty of your borders. So that all comes together. Now I also want you to notice on this little quilt, this little white flange that we have, that is from our shortcut binding tool. You get to put the binding and that little flange on all at the same time. Um, you can do the, the hand whip stitch if you want, but it's also wonderful for all machine done. And this one is called Double Star. You can get the kit. You can order a pattern all by itself. Now the cool thing about the patterns, whether it's this one or the um, Americana I'm going to show you, you can get multiple sizes of stars in your pattern. We go from a 3 inch star all the way up to the 12 inch star. <clears throat> So in the railroad fabric, we have this one that is the double uh, star. We have the Union Square that we've talked about over here. You can see it on the Union Square out of the railroad fabrics. Oh, where'd the other one go? I guess she took it away. We'll talk about this one here in a minute, but let's look at this other railroad one. So this one is called the um, American uh, Americana, and you can see here, let's switch our camera. I'm trying to. There we go. Oops. Okay, very That's good. That's what I... Yay, we get to see both. Do you want okay. to see both? Well, we can right now. Okay. Okay. So here's that same six inch star. We did a strata of strips. There's four of those and that makes your Americana design. And this is Americana Red Railroad. It's from our railroad fabrics. You can see our borders with the, um, I guess you can't see the borders. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can make it. Zoom Which it one over. are you looking at? This one right here where my hand is, the Americana? Uh-huh. Oh. There you go. You can see the, the black check with the red uh, train and the black star again for that one. So really uh, beautiful quilts um, from the railroad. Okay, let's look at half square triangles. Question? Uh, just about how do you know which line to use? I think must have been for the two-step trim. Uh-huh. For the two-step trim, you can go over to the left or the right. So if you want to zoom down here again, and I'm going to make some half square triangles, option four next. Let's zoom down. Okay, so when you look at your ruler, um, we call it the two-step because you're stepping over two lines. That's why we call it the two-step. So you know which one it is because you're going to put the 90 in there and step it over two. That's why we call it the two-step. And you can go to the left of it or up and use it, or you can go down to the two-step on that end. It doesn't matter. It's going to be the same uh, trim. So when I want half square triangles, I'm going to do the two step on all four corners. So put your 90 in and this time I'm going to go down one, two, so that you can see it's the same sharp trim goes right through that point. And you're just going to trim it and do all four sides. And I went to the bottom um, of the 90 on that one. It doesn't matter. The next one I'll go up. It's all the same trim. There's a 90 and there's one, two. Keep it square as you go around. 
otherwise they're not going to be the same shape and you've got to learn to be consistent with your seams here in the back because that will that will affect um, your shape too if you've got a fat seam here and a skinny seam here it's going to make um, two of them not the not the same size and not the correct size so there's that one and then you just come in here and cut it this direction and then come in and cut it this direction and you're going to have your four half square triangles just like that So let's look at this one here with our half square triangles. This one is one of our kits. This one is called Thomas Log Cabin. You can see how we have four log cabins here put in the middle. And then we did um, the uh, uh, flying geese, option three, and the half square triangles here for this beautiful one that goes around. Now we have a brand new uh, trick that we're doing with our half square triangles and our flying geese and um, we call that the firefly. Now you maybe noticed how on this one, when I did my cut, I didn't cut both directions to get the four individuals. I only cut once. Now if you come in here and put these together like this, um, and sew them together, and then come in and cut like this, you can see how you can get multiple half square triangles in a row. And this is a new book called Firefly. It'll be out later this spring. And of course, we'll do a teaching on it and a webinar when it's ready to go. Students in my premium club have already been learning it. They started learning it last semester, last fall. And then we've been doing it in our classes this spring. If you're new to premium club, it's a, year, it's a membership. You can do it monthly or uh, by the year. And on Mondays, we have teachings. Majority of them are live. Some are recorded. And then that we have a spring semester where we focus on something that we're learning. And you can make the, the project in the fall semester. We have a focus on what we're learning, a theme, and you can make the projects or just soak up the learning. It's not just about making the quilt or making the project, but it's about honing your skills and improving on your human element and learning more. Learning how to get these uh, quilts that are beautiful with all of these different points and shapes in them that normally you would have shied away from just improving your overall quilting and piecing skills is what we do. <clears throat> In the spring, we also have a retreat. Our retreat is April 19th to the 23rd. We still have um, a couple of spots left, so get your friends and come. It's um, If you're flying into the Dallas airport, it's about an hour from the Dallas metro. Um, hour and a half maybe it's about an hour from our house we're on farther out west it's a beautiful retreat center it's top notch on sleeping and restrooms and sewing areas and food and dining and kitchen and friends and fun and learning it it is a retreat like you have never been to because you come and you bring what you want to work on any of the square and a square stuff that you want to learn maybe you have a project that you want to adapt over to the square and a square system you can purchase kits there you can purchase stuff ahead of time and have um, and we have five teachers me plus um, several other teachers that know the square and a square Kay and Kathy and Sherry and Jenny and even Lisa Berger is going to be there this year so you maybe met her in my booth at Houston but uh, women that are very talented there's hundreds of, um, of years of experience there and um, not only will we be working on a project that you can come by and watch and learn from anytime but whatever you're working on you have a teacher right there right at that moment um, of helping you do whatever it is that you want to do we had quite a few students last year that we had focused on borders in some of our premium club and they brought panels to border some people brought quilts to bind we have our shortcut binding tool and our experts on that of Kay and Kathy our machine quilting with Kathy our color with Sherry so there's a teacher there with an expertise in everything to help you learn and grow we're going to have a lot of fun but you will go home being a better piecer and quilter than when you came the the few days before so go in and sign up it's excellent everything food sleeping friends projects facilities everything is top notch come on and join us go to our website squareinasquare.com sign up bring a friend uh, and uh, let's have a ball and improve our quilting skills so um, back to this one here down here on the table this one is the thomas log cabin we uh, shipped out quite a few kits on it after our sunday webinar 
Remember, all of these um, quilt kits you can get at 25% off. Now, this one also uses the um, um, half square triangles here. This one is called Eagle Mountain. The pattern is called Grizzly Mountain. And we've just used flying geese here to help connect our, our big um, kind of a bear paw corner. We've used um, the firefly or just the plain half square triangles to make those. And so you don't have to look at a quilt with all of these triangles and worry about um, getting all of those triangles too. I see a lot of sew alongs on, on um, social media and um, some of these just have tons of, of triangle units and lots of little sizes and I just think man I wished I wished I could show them how to do that with this. <clears throat> Now this one is uh, one of our kits called um, Love of Country. It was um, uh, one of our, I think it was our fall project about two years ago in Premium Club. And we do have some kits for this. There's two different options. If you're already in Premium Club, then the pattern is already in there for you. It's a download. And so you just need to get the fabric kit. If you're not Premium Club, then there's another one for you that has the teaching of the quilt in there for that semester and it has the pattern for you so that you can download that. And this one is called Love of Country. Now, I didn't point this out in the video on Sunday, but this little unit right here is a hen house. And I want you to see this beautiful star that normally would be difficult to do, but with the hen house, it becomes so, so easy to do. And we're gonna show you here in a few minutes about how to do the hen house. So it's this square right here with these three little chicks um, going into the middle. Normally you would look at that and think, oh, that is just way, way, way too difficult, but it's very, very easy to do. And we're gonna come back to this one here in just a minute. And this one is love of country. Now, when you see our applique, I like to introduce a little bit of applique at different times because it is not scary to do. We have a very special way of doing it. Um, that is with um, the starch, uh, it's called the starch method, where you starch the edges and use paper to help bring it on over. I've got a little demo I'm gonna do and show you a little bit more on it here in a few, few moments. So let's see what's under here. This one is more, uh, more hen house. We'll come back to this one here with the hen house. But uh, let's look at this one right here. This one is called Rolling Star, and we have um, kits for it. You can see our uh, patriotic fabrics. You can see our eagles in here. I've got another one to show you with some of the patriotic and the eagles. And this right here is our option 11, right here. So I get all four of these out of the option 11, and we taught this one during Quilt Club Week. So you can go back into Quilt Club Week, of 2022 and you can get the teachings for this now if you're a part of premium club quilt club week is a part of it you don't have to sign up extra you don't have to pay extra if you're not a part of premium club and you want to do quilt club week you can go into the website and you can purchase quilt club week and you can get quilt club week 2020 2021 and 2023 there are tons of, of classes in there on piecing on machine quilting on a on a long arm or on your your regular tabletop domestic machine there's panels there's borders there's it's lectures it's just like if you went to a quilt show what would you see and do you would see different vendors you would see different demos you would see different tools you could take a lecture you could take a class and you could hang out with your friends and have a good time and that's what quilt club week is but it's all online. And Quilt Club Week this year for 2023 will be the last week of September. So make sure you um, sign up for Premium Club. It'll be a part of it. Or just go in and sign up for Quilt Club Week now. You can go in now, learn from the last three years, all of the lectures and teaching and everything. And then you'll be ready and caught up for our Quilt Club Week this fall, the last week of September of 2023. Now also... Um, something about quilt club I was going to tell you I forgot 
anyway, this is one of the teaching. This is option 11. It's Rolling Star. It's one of the kits that you can purchase um, at a 25% discount. This one here, down here on the table, this one is the pineapple. The pineapple we have in multiple sizes. You can get a lap size, you can get um, a full, a king, a queen. Go into the website, you can purchase any of those and get your 25% off. You can see here how this was our center and our first row of strips, and then we went around it again. And then when you start on the third time, notice how you start, instead of just having four sides, you start getting the blunted area and you double it to eight and that's what creates your uh, pineapple. If you go to the, the Facebook for around September um, 2019, uh, August, September in there was when I was working on a quilt with the pineapple. You can get some videos and then also in uh, Premium Club and Quilt Club Week, you can learn about the um, pineapple. Really fun, fun quilt and easy to do and you don't have to sew on any paper. All this stuff where people are sewing on paper is just really, really crazy. Now this one here is um, our Eagle Snowball. And so the kit is normally $99. You get it for a 25% off. So this is really a great one to have. It also comes with our Snowball book. So here is our little um, Snowball book that gives you uh, different um, ideas uh, with your Snowball. And then it also has a chart in there so that you can know how to make your snowball uh, different sizes. I want to, um, so this one is the snowball and the kit. And then, oh, here's another one. Now this one here is also the snowball. You can see the, the snowball block and we've used the little Dresden English paper piecing. So I wanna give you just a little quick deal on this English paper piecing. Yeah, somebody is asking what method you use, turned or machine, so. Um, you can do however you want, but I, I like the look of the needle turn, but I don't want the work of the needle turn. And that's why I love doing it with the, the English paper piecing. So, of course, you know about the um, little hexi, the little hexies that you can get the paper. And you, um, I use the brush. I pour the starch down in the brush, and you can keep it in there. You don't have to empty it out. And you're, when you get ready to use the brush part to put it along the side and then you iron it over, you do have to squeeze it here. It won't come out. It won't come out down here on your little brush if you don't squeeze it right there. Um, the other day I was like, I can't get it to come out. And I was like, well, you're not squeezing it. You gotta squeeze it for it to come out, which is nice because then you lay it down and it won't just run out everywhere. But when you store it, you do wanna store it up in a little pencil thing. So we have the starch brush. We have the starch that you put down in it. You can use um, your little um, irons. You need them to get really super hot and you don't want it turning off on you. So we have the little irons for you. And you just, um, Cut your fabric out, put your paper on there, and you just use your little starch brush to just wet, just damp, just a little bit of it, and then use your iron to put it over. You can leave it in there to stitch it into your spots, or you can take it out. And then on this one, the, these that we have in stock, we have this heart one here uh, that I'm working on. And then this one is the little Dresden from uh, the Snowball Quilt up here up here, that one, which is about the size of your hand. And then we have this other shape here um, that is um, it's called an oval Dresden, so a little bit different shape. I haven't made one with it yet, but um, that one is the snowball. This one I haven't done. And then this one is here. So you have your little cardboard pieces. You just cut your fabric out, put your starch on, and then press it over. So then the edges are already nice and clean and ready to go together and you just just stitch them and you don't you don't want to get them too close together because then you have too heavy of a seam i can feel that this one's a little bit more stitching because i can feel that seam that ridge it's a little bit more 
and they won't come apart. And so this is one here that I'm working on. This in uh, Quilt Club Week, I did one with baskets and this was my, let's see, it went like this. And then I had a vase down here and it looked like a basket full of flowers. So uh, when I put this one together, I like to put it together in different steps. But if you leave part of it open, see how this one's open, then it's easier to come in here. I'll start here, I'll stitch all the way around, and I'll stitch there, and then I can, or I can leave this one open, come in and stitch, and then finish. It's a little bit easier if you don't, to like this one's all stitched around, so it's a little bit harder to put that one in there. I should have left uh, one edge open to put it in. But you'll just do it like that, and then just start stitching it and turning it um, as you go. I like to leave my outside edges in as long as possible. That way my, see how this one right here starting to open up? I don't want that to open up. So I leave my outside edges in as long as I can. Um, but see, they just, they just come out whenever you're, you're ready for them to come out, whether, no matter which one you're doing. Let me show you, um, one similar to that that I'm doing, that I'm done with. So all of these that I'm working on, I'll put this one up here like this. Now we have all of these new vintage fabrics and that's what most of these are that I'm working on and it's a great way to use up um, scraps and scragglers. But here you can see the, the heart put on. It's a rectangle where we've done just the little snowball corners on them like that. And you can see how I've used different colors for the back. And then this was quilted with the pearl cotton size number eight with the black. So it's got a nice big utility stitch here, which kind of goes with the primitiveness of it. And you just pick some pretty backgrounds. I've got um, that one mossy, uh, dark mossy green one in our vintage collection. I can't wait to use it and use it as the background um, and put my hearts on. And so, this is um, how you get going with it. I love handwork, so it's a fun handwork uh, project. And that one's the Dresden Star. Any questions? Uh, are you hand sewing or machine sewing? Uh, when you um, are putting these together, when you're putting these together, you are hand sewing them together. And when you put this on the, the fabric, you hand stitch it just like it's an applique around the edges. That's how you do those. Okay, another question? What is the finish outside dam diameter of the blocks, I guess? Oh, I don't know, it's a rectangle. I'm gonna guess about, you'd have to measure your, um, your Dresden and make sure it fits on there correctly the way that you want to, but you can make those any size that you want, as long as you're your English paper piecing that you're doing fits on there correctly, then, then you're good to go. Okay, now we also have the um, nine patch and four patch rulers, which are great. Um, we showed the um, quilt up here, the road to nowhere, that the road to nowhere quilt that was up here would have used the four patch. And then we're gonna come over here to this one. It's called Jingle Jangle. And this one right here is called Jingle Jangle. You see some motion and some movement. You can see kind of the circles and the motion and the movement, but it's just sewn in rows. It, the way the quilt is put up here, the rows are vertical, but of course the quilt is put together horizontal. And you just have your nine patches here. Your nine patches become your center unit. So when you think about the basic square, instead of having just a plain square in the middle, we have the nine patch in here. We have the strips on the side. We use the 60 on the ruler to trim it up, so it's still going to be a square, but notice how your block starts to tip inside that square. And this is from the Jingle Jangle pattern. 
The Jingle Jangle pattern also has one in it where you can put a star here in the middle. And in Quilt Club Week of 2021, we did, I think we did some in 22 also, we did some of this Jingle Jangle uh, with the star and with the nine patch. Now, uh, we have a, a kit for this one that has the backing to come with it. And the backing, the quilt is normally $250, and I think you can get it. It's either one. I think it's 175. It might be as low as 150, but that is a great value, and you're going to get your red check for the back. And once again, you can use it to make the quilt, or you can use it to make any other design that you want. It's got our dirt, um, 1790 floral, our check, our uh, dirt tattered and torn, and it's got some of this red in here also from that that vintage floral. It's a scene change. <laughs> now these particular quilts here, I have uh, these particular quilts on sale and Where I don't know if I brought my... You're not in the camera. That's okay. <laughs> okay. All right. This one is a kit that you can purchase and it's a pattern. It's called Star Flower. This is a quilt top. I don't have the size here, but you can find the size on the, the website. Of course, you go to squareandsquare.com to order any of the products or to purchase anything. This is a quilt top. I make so many samples for all the different kits that we make um, and um, to teach with. I just can't keep everything. We sold probably about eight quilts on Sunday and I have a couple of other ones here. This one is called Starflower. You can purchase the quilt top. It was normally $4.95. It's on sale for $2.50. It's just the top. Or you can purchase a kit and a kit comes in multiple sizes. I think you have three or four sizes for this one too. So it's the size of the quilt, not the size of the block when we offer you um, different ones. We talked about the Village Square kit and how you could go in there in the comment section and add the, the yardage that you want the, or the different fabrics you want. And um, let's see, this one right here is not on the website, so you'll just have to email. And it's Borders, Borders, because we worked on Borders America. And uh, we, um, you can do any type of um, applique or wool here in the middle. This is just a sample that I had to show different borders and different colors. And um, this one, um, oh, I don't have it on here. We're just going to make up a price and, and do it for um, $95. Let me write that down so we won't forget if someone says, what was that? Um, America Borders. $95. Now you won't find it on the website. It's not on there. So you'll just have to email Steve. And if we have multiple people wanting it, it'll be the timestamp on the email that was first. Okay. And uh, this, the emails, Jeff, is yeah, the emails email. right down there. And you can see Jody at square in a square. So these two quilt tops can go home with you. What about, can we back up to the heart? Yeah. Uh, applique. Uh huh. Have a question. Okay. What's our question? Uh, do you have that one for sale? The, the quilt. Other one seems no. The applique. The big applique that looks like a heart. That quilt. You this have. one. Yes. Yes. This one is a hair different than the one um, on the pattern. They don't make that one anymore. Let me get these down here. And that's a ten inch size. Yeah. So here's the one in the quilt that's done. Here is this one. It's not, it's not a ton different. It's just a little bit, just a little bit um, of a different shape. Well, not a different shape, just a little bit in sizing is different. So I think you can see, see that. Just a hair bit smaller. If I put it all the way up here at the top, it's from the very tip here is maybe two inches. If I go down this way, it's just, a, yeah, a little less than two inches up there. The width is pretty much the same. It's just a little different on the height. Okay, was that uh, the question? Do you use paper piecing for all your appliques? Basically, yes. I'll cut out the shape out of the paper that I need, whether it's... Um, 
whether it's a flower or a leaf or whatever. So let's look at this one. Okay, so if I'm doing my flowers or if I'm doing my hearts, whatever it is, I'll cut out the shape that I need. These um, already have are already cut out, so all you have to do is starch them and press them and you're ready to stitch. So if you're doing something that doesn't already have the paper pre-cut for you, then you cut it out of freezer paper. We have the freezer paper on our website that goes through the computer, so you can copyright out uh, the designs right over to it to cut out if you have it in a pattern or a book. And then I starch the edges over and then I'm able to just stitch it down. And because the edges are already turned under and they're starched, they stay where they're supposed to stay. So when you stitch, it's easy to just stitch because you're not stitching and then trying to turn it and make it perfect. And then you get all the little bumps and, and it's not smooth and straight. And so I, I love doing the starch method. I, I wouldn't be doing any type of applique or English paper piecing if I couldn't starch the edges over and do it because it um, makes it so um, cleaner and prettier uh, on your work. It's easier to do that stitching. And when I'm doing all of this starching to get my pieces ready to go, I just, you know, put a movie on and get everything all set up and I can sit there and do a whole bunch, you know, in a two hour uh, section. So I really enjoy that. I like to get a bunch ready to go and then I'm ready to stitch. So I have a whole little little tray little toolbox of these all turned under and I can go in and pick this color or that color in the different shapes and do it. Okay, another question? Uh, no, I think we're good. Okay. Um, okay, let's look at, um, so this is a kit that's on sale. I think we already talked about it, didn't we? That you can you, if you're in Premium Club, you can get just the kit. If you're not, then you have to purchase the one with the pattern and the, and the teaching in it. Um, okay, this quilt right here is called uh, Split Bear Paw. It was normally $695. It's now $395. And this is the Long Thin Triangles. Um, I'm trying to think. I don't think this is a current pattern that we have in any of the books right now. Um, it might be. No, I think it's in, it might be in Maley's. I'm not sure. Anyway, um, this is the long, thin triangle units with the half square triangle. It's got the wide sashing with a nine patch. Really a pretty it's not uh, the diamond. quilt. Yeah, this is a diamond. It, the book. It's a pattern. It's in, in diamond. a diamond book. I don't know. It's either diamonds or Maley. Okay. Um, and we're going to uh, teach this one before too long, but um, this one here is... Sixty-six by eighty-six is on the sides of it, and it's got the blue, the midnight blue on the back with some really pretty quilting. Then we have um, this Americana. It's a nice big one. It's um, I've used had this for a sample. It's seventy-six by eighty-four. And um, it is now on sale for $350, $350. That's amazing. And then this is a queen size crocheted. Uh, it's in perfect condition. No spots or anything on it. No, no, no ripping or tearing anywhere. It's a queen size uh, crocheted. And it was $8.95. It's on sale for $1.95. So a great, great deal on those. Okay, let's look at a couple of these individual um, things that we have here. Um, this one is um, some of our train fabric. So it has the um, panel in it. You can see, um, we don't have the camera that comes over that far today. Where do you want it? So in this particular one, it's the 1800 historical bundle. It was 75, it's on sale for 50. It's three yards of this train panel and it's three yards of the um, Civil War soldier. So that's one of the, the ways that you can get the train. Okay, um, I'm not sure when this, this was about 20 seconds ago. What's the name of it? I don't know what you were doing. 
time. I thought you were still showing these. Um, the name, well, over here on these quilts, um, this one is the crocheted um, queen size. This is the American Americana quilt. And, and if you put, go to the website and put in the search bar quilts for sale or sell items, they'll pop up. And then this one was the split bear paw, the blue, blue and white one. If that didn't answer the question, let me know. Um. Uh, on in the reference book when you're talking about the X in the reference book when we're talking uh, about the X is that something you can talk about today, um, I can do a quick little um, something on it let me see um, okay in the reference book when you're talking about the charts Okay, let's say for the um, option 11. So this is the option 11 right here. And you get four of these out of your block. And if you look at your information, the X is right there. So on your chart, it's going to say, what is the size of this you're looking for? Now, if you're following our patterns, it tells you everything. But if you're doing your own thing and you're doing option 11, you need to know what is this that you're looking for? Is it a two inch? Is it sewn or is it cut? So when I would go to my option 11 here in my book, I see my X right there on the square. So that's what you need to know. X marks the spot of what you need to know. So if this is two inches, then you would come in here and find it on your chart. And then you move across and it tells you what size of, um, of center square, what size your first row of strips, and then what size your second row of strips would be. So it's really pretty, it's really pretty basic, pretty, pretty easy. The X is that little square and that's what we're talking about. And in your pattern or design you need to know what size that is you're looking for. If and you then, have any specifics. Yes. And the text number 817-713-2879, that is always there to help you when you're ready to jump in there and and work on whatever it is you're working on. Do you always have to draw out your design? What? Do you always have to draw out your design? Do you always have to draw out your design? No. With the information that's in the books, with those charts and stuff, you don't. But if you need to draw it out for clarity of what you're doing, then yes, draw it out. Um, like any time um, any pattern designer or anything does anything, they draw it out. They start and draw it out. Now with the charts and stuff and the options, I'm able to bypass some of that and not draw it out um, just with some common knowledge. So for example, let's say on that rolling star pattern, I mean, I'll see if I can find it and put it up here. That's the thing about the charts in the reference book is that it gets you to the sewing machine faster because you, you don't have to always go back and draw everything out. Okay, I'm gonna put this on the screen real quick. Uh, the split bear paw pattern is in the mailing page. Well, thank you, Linda. Split bear paws in the mailing book, page 90. Okay, let's look at this one here. Okay, so this right here is an option 11. This is an option 1, option 11, 1, 1, 1, 11s, and the center. So the center is your, um, is your bird, like you see right here. And then these above it and on each side are just option 1s. And then these in the corner are your option 11s. This one is so easy um, to do and it looks so um, complicated. Okay, so if I 
if I know that this is what I want and I've got it broke down, I don't have to draw it out to scale. I can just draw it with this quick little with little thing right here. Okay, if we wanted this to be a 12 inch sewn block, and when you're starting with pattern adapting, no matter what method you're doing, no matter if you're doing it like they did it 100 years ago or you're doing it like this, you have to work in that sewn measurement. There's sewn measurement, there's a cut measurement. Sewn measurement is graph paper. You have to work in that graph paper size, the sewn size, the smaller size, okay? So if this is a 12 inch block that I wanna make, I have three units. In our premium club this uh, semester, we're talking about grids, about how to look at grids and divide it into anything that you want it, want it to make. So I started out with just a square, and you can put anything in that square. You saw how we put option ones, we did option 11s, you can put anything in that square, four patch, um, half square triangles, flying geese, anything can go in that square of that grid. And I have three of these, so three divided into 12 means four inches, so all of these have to be a four inch sewn, sewn, remember sewn. You have to work in those sewn measurements. So with the charts, option one, now if I don't have my charts, I've got to go to the graph paper. But with my option one chart here, I know that these are four inch sewn. I look at the top of my chart. It says, what's the sewn size of your option one that you're looking for? So I'm just gonna come down here and find my four and then I'm gonna move across and it's gonna give me my center square and it's gonna give me my strips for my option one. Now for my option 11s, I know these are 11s. When I look over here, I have to know that X, just like we talked about a little while ago. I have to know what that is. Well, if this is four inches, this is two, because it's half. So it's a two, so that would be a two inch sewn. So I can come to my option 11, I'm gonna find my two inch sewn and then I move across and it tells me what size that square is. It tells me what size that next row of strips is gonna be. And it tells me what the last, the size of that last row of strips. So a complicated design like this is just broken down to, to can this. Can you look at page 36 in the book? Mm -hmm. How can I determine the finished size? So okay, now first of all, when you say finished, are you really talking about a finished side? The finished size is the sewn size. So I'm looking at page 36, and what do you want to know? Uh, how do I determine the finished size from the example on page 36? Well, there's lots of different examples right here on page 36. So this top one here is an option 14. So this, um, this right here is what is the cut or the unfinished size of your X. So that X is a half square triangle. Do you know what size? Because this is a 14. That's a 14. See, this is a plain square. This one has two triangles in it. Okay. So that. this triangle right here, what's the size you want that to be? If this is a four, then it's gonna be a two, it's half. Light if it's bulb a moment, she figured. Light bulb moment, okay, great. See, you keep asking questions. We keep doing it, even though for 40 years I've done this, you know, we just keep showing it, and boom, the light bulb goes off. So yay, she got it? Perfect, okay, any other questions? I don't think so. Okay, yay, I love light bulb moments. So see, when you know, go through and learn those options. Uh, we talk about making a little reference book. We have... Um, Somebody mentioned they were doing that. Yeah, so if you're Premium Club or Quilt Club Week, you can go in and print off this little cover to go in your notebook. And then you can use your plastic pages and just go in and make each option. If you're Premium Club, you've also got some downloads that you can get. And just go in and make them and start learning them. But remember, this is how everything starts. And you either trim leaving a fourth of an inch or you trim up to the tip sharp. If you're cutting it up, you're gonna go through the tip sharp. If you're not cutting it up, you leave that option one. It's just, just that easy. And then everything's at your fingertips. This right here is uh, basically what we did for Jingle. This is how we taught borders in our border class last January. We did a whole semester of borders. 
our option 11. I'm sorry, option 9. So our square in the middle, trimmed it like flying geese, then sew around it again. And because we trimmed it like flying geese, you get to cut through here and you get your seam allowances off of your points. And look how you can do them for a border, how you have that mitered edge to go along the other side of your border. All of these units are what you need to make every quilt. Your pineapple, go in and make your little book. Okay, let's look at some of these. We have um, some bundles. Um, there's a bundle that's called, um, I don't I don't know if it's a, called a historical bundle, but you can get your two yards of your soldiers, two yards of your Civil War, and two yards of your train panel. So there's that collection that you can get. And then there's also one that has um, the different train pieces in it, two yards of the different train pieces. Those are all on sale. And then, um, We've got these that are just individuals, just individuals. There's just one of them. So only one person is going to be able to get these. So there's this one right here. I think it's two, four, six. Let's see, two, four, six. I think it's eight yards of fabric. Um, this is the train. This is one that I had a few years ago. You can't get any more of it. This, um, uh, the Laurel Leaf Soldier is one that you can't get any more of. The Black Star is almost all gone this one yard of this um, darker um, background. That's all there is. There's only one of those. Jump on that. Then there's this one here that is in the bolt. You know, when we cut all of our half yards, one yards, two yards, sometimes there's just an individual piece. There's um, over 45 inches here. I think in the on the website it'll say 42 inches, but there's more than that. So that means if you laid these all out, you'd have more than a yard of fabric. So that's really a good one. You can see the different ones, the red, black, check. This is that mossy green I want to put in the back of my Dresden star, my oranges. So that's one of the bundles. And then we have this one. Well, there's not, there's multiples of this. The multiple people can get this one. We don't have just one. So this one shows um, two of the railroad prints with the red and um, light uh, background check. You've got your... Uh, track with your two greens here. These are half yard pieces. You've got your creams with your black check and you can get nine pieces for some really inexpensive price. I don't remember what it is. So one, two, three, four, four and a half yards. Normally that would be over $50 and I think it's around $25. So that's a great bundle to have and there's there's more of those. Okay, now I want to show you Hen House, and then we'll, we're going to be done. So if you have a last-minute question, uh, make sure you get it in there. Um, also, this one right here is Abby's uh, Schoolhouse. Uh, not Abby's Schoolhouse. Abby's Wedding Quilt. This, this one, we taught it during Quilt Club Week. Schoolhouse. Abby's Schoolhouse. Abby had a schoolhouse, too. Okay. And this kit, you can get 25% off, and it's just these two um, basic red, tattered and torn, and the other one. So if you want red, tattered and torn, and the tan, tattered and torn, you can get it for 25% off if you order that kit. That's pretty, pretty amazing. Um, there, and there are some other kits I didn't show that uh, we showed on um, Sunday. Okay, let's look down here at our little hen house book. And then we're going to look at our, our pieces. So I love to have a project where I can just take my scraps as I'm working and finishing up on a project. I want to know what I'm going to do with all of these scraps that I have left over. So this hen house book, it's got beautiful quilts, but I, I designed it for my, my scraps. So I know to make my, my little, um, let me find just one. Here we go. Okay. So this is my little hen house piece right here. And you can see that it has three flying geese. So you can see down in here in my basket, 
Um, I've got a bunch of low-flying geese made. You can see how I've started sewing. See how this is my little strip at the top. I put my three flying geese um, on there. See here's this has got the strip at the top with two flying geese. You just keep adding your flying geese. And then you have to put it on all four sides. So, so here is one where I've got my, my three flying geese together. It became my center. I did strips on all of the sides and I did color up here on this one because you can do different colors in different places and get different looks. And that's, I'm going to show you some of those. But I know that when I'm cutting up my scraps, I know I need a size for my chicks, which I think those are two and a fourth for my chicks. I know I need scraps to sew around my squares so that I can get my, my little flying geese. So here are little, little scraps and little pieces left over from trim offs and other projects. And see, they'll, look, they'll work here for my little flying geese or they'll work for my bottom piece. So you can see here how I have this going in process. And on this particular one, we call this one Chicken Dash. And I'm going to make these. They look, see how you, looks like that churn dash in the middle. And this, I think, was a two and a half. So that's another one that's in my box. I had colors that were two and a fourth and colors that were two and a half. And then I could just cut those and have those ready to roll. Put my three flying geese together. Put my strips on the side. I did color on the top. We talked about that. And see how when you trim it up, see that color is going to come out of there like that. And then you put them in there and you've got your, and then you just have your sashing and your cornerstone. And there, there you go on that. So let's look at, and of course we just trim with, um, see we need a fourth of an inch because we're not chopping it up. So you just trim like an option one, and there's your blocks. Now let's look at these up here. These are all in your hen house book. This one here is just, this is like the Storm at Sea. Remember I said I'm going to show you one that we did that's basically the Storm at Sea setup. So here is your, your big square right here. We use the chicken dash. We did color on all four sides. So we've got two that are green, two that are gold, and we did that on all of them. Then we did the diamond standing up, and these just alternate. Then we have the little square here with the diamond laying down. So this is the same setup as a storm at sea. We have the diamond standing up, laying down. We have a plain or simple square for the small one, and then the hen house for here. And in the real storm at sea, you would do an option two for this one. And it, um, get, But when you look back at this, you can see so much motion and movement. Um, and here you can see the black star really jump out. Here you see the black and the green kind of mold together and you get a different look. You can see this cool movement in here. And this one is called um, Harvest Bounty and it's in your hen house book. And our vintage fabrics that we just got November, December, there's a lot of great oranges and blacks and golds and oranges and greens and stuff that you can make this one really cool. Use your scraps for your inside and then use your gold and green and oranges for your main pieces and it'll just turn out really super pretty. This one here is another one that's in the, in the hen house book. You can see the hen house block here with just a split rail. And we use three different fat quarters and you'll get six blocks out of your three different fat quarters. And then here is the... Um, the Dizzy Geese one, that's the one that we used for the cover, the Dizzy Geese here. And we use the long pointed um, option 18s, those come from the diamond. We've used the geese so it looks like that it's going in a circle. And then we also used them in the border, if you can see, come over the other direction. You can see how we did it in the border, it makes a really pretty border. I just needed some width on this particular quilt, I didn't need any more height, so I just did the border on the the two sides. I didn't do it on the top and the bottom. Okay, and that quilt underneath there is the snowball. So I think that's pretty much it for today. Um, we have any last minute questions from anybody? No, I think we're good. Okay, remember we're going to go to Sunday for the sale, so soak those things up. 
Um, got some really good deals for you here. And don't forget, we've got a couple of quilts and quilt tops for sale. Those Right now, those are the only ones we have left. We sold everything else um, from the Sunday Live. Okay, questions 817-713-2879. Also, you can email Jody at Square and a Square or Steve at Square and a Square. And um, come join and our... That number's good international, too. Yeah, you can use that number international uh, with a WhatsApp if you need to. And, of course, there's time changes with all of that. Your night is my day and so on, so it may take a little longer. And... Um, Go in and join Quilt Club Week. Go in and join Premium Club. If you join Premium Club, remember Quilt Club Week is a part of it. You don't have to pay extra for it. And um, we're here to learn and educate and have fun. We have Facebook pages for Quilt Club Week and Premium Club. And then just the regular Facebook page, which you may be watching this on that. Okay, get your orders in. We'll get them shipped out just as soon as we can. And uh, we'll, those of you in Premium Club, we'll see you on Monday. Also, check our website for live. Sometimes I just jump in there and do a live if I'm sewing in my sewing room. Any last-minute questions? All right, that's great. Glad you joined us. See you soon.